do. Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. It's great to see you. I finished up I finished up a project. That in itself is really something, isn't it? I finished up this project I was working on, the first of my tarot cards uh, that I designed based on our tarot card class. I haven't trimmed it or anything, but this is 100% made out of pantyhose, dyed pantyhose, right? So I dyed all these crazy colors, and this is, uh, this is an image of the magician, which I have as like a young girl, kind of like my daughter. And then I've got some of the sort of tricks of the trade, the trappings, the candle, the mushroom, the crystals, the, um, you know, this is not a drug reference, by the way. You know, I'm pretty conservative. But, you know, just bits and pieces that I thought were a bit magical and, and outdoorsy and a couple of clouds. And I, I really love this piece. I don't think it's a fine work, but I love it. And it means something to me um, because I love this card. Oh, my gosh, look what I just saw. I missed a spot. Uh-oh, I'm going to have to fix that later. Well, I can fix that, but in the meantime, I'm thinking about how I want to finish this piece um, because I do have other videos on finishing, but I do not have a video on finishing with a crocheted edge. And as you know, I'm a pretty big crocheter. I'm not a good enough to be a knitter, but I am a decent crocheter, and I know I can put a pretty good edge on this. So my first question will be when I'm deciding what kind of a crocheted edge I want on a finished piece of rug hooking, my first thought is going to be, do I want to deal with wool strips or do I want to do yarn? It's possible to work with wool strips, but for me, I don't like finishing edges with wool strips because just the very nature of it being wide and flat and having to worry about whether it flips and sits right as you work around the edge, right? This is a small piece, so it's not such a big deal. But I certainly prefer to work with yarn because you completely remove that dimension, that layer of grief and aggravation with the strips uh, sitting well or not sitting well, which is not to say that it doesn't look beautiful and other people do it well. That's not my favorite, and I need to work fast. So I'm looking at this piece, The Magician, and I'm going to start thinking about, you know, what, what kind of yarn am I looking at? So over here I have some of my yarns hanging up, um, partial wall of shame. Most of them are not, but many are here. And the ones that are here are ones that are kind of, in my mind, on deck. I do this on deck thing. So they're all different kinds, but many are sock and DK weight that I've gotten in stores over the years that I love. And there's no great system of organization happening. As you can see, I've got quite a few Halloween colors out because I think about Halloween all year. I've got some nice high luster kind of embroidery ones here. Um... I'm looking at the piece and thinking what might work, you know. I've got ones that are speckled and color changing, which I love. When you have skeins like this, you see this pretty one with the speckles and the blue, you know that that's going to be a constant change of pattern, right? The, the speckly white part is constantly going to be interrupted with large stretches of solid blue. Now, not even color-wise, but do I want that on my whipped piece? I'm not sure. I think it might be confusing in my mind. Um, you know, and then there's ones like these that are the Tweety ones, and these are put out by the company called uh, Crazy Yarn, No Tour or Like. I've got lots of these around in different color schemes. Um, here's another one here. But I like those. That's a maybe. The thing with this yarn is it's very flat, right? It's very flat and wooly looking, just like, like this Donegal type of yarn. Whereas this piece... Because it's done in pantyhose, it has a little bit of a luster. There is a bit of a magical quality to it. My eye keeps going to these two because they are sparkly. I'll put them next to each other. This is a dark sparkle, and this is a light sparkle. And this one, this one lost its tag. This one is Cornbread and Honey. What a beautiful name. Pastel Rainbow Decay Weight. This is a sock weight. So this is more mushy and springy. Um, this is also mushy and springy, but a little bit thinner. And these are both glittery. So I'm kind of leaning toward those. I'm just walking you through my decision-making progress. This is also a beautiful one. Let's take a few down and look at them. And let's take a true, looking at the colors still, this one might be good, right? The blue moon with all those mixed colors. Um, you know, I like some of the, ho the Halloween ones. Creepy, creepy crawlers. Those might be too much. I don't want to earmark this piece as a Halloween piece per se, because um, I love the tarot. Let me just take down one bright, just so we know. Um, I have a lot of brights. Oh, that is quite nice, actually. That is 
nicer than I thought. I don't want to earmark it as a Halloween piece. That's one of my thoughts. So I'm just not sure about that. I do have some brights running through the background, which is fun, but I'm not sure. Um, that's a maybe. Now, all right, that's a maybe. Now this one, you know what? That's also quite pretty, isn't it? This is a blue moon yarn, um, socks that rock. Let's get this off of it and see the yarn a little bit better because I want to see how often it's going to change, you know. So it has um, it has a fairly regular repeat. There's a big moment here and here at the two butt ends where we get solid colors, which might actually be good because you can see these colors are really present in this piece. That's another, uh, that's another big maybe. Honestly, I think I like that better than the Halloween one. I think the Halloween one makes the kind of cheapens the tarot card in a weird way. The tarot card for me has, it, this card means, um, the magician means that you take the things that you have around you and you make them work, right? It's a very practical card. It's not a magical or a mystical fortune telling card. It's like you get what you get, you have your bits and pieces, good, bad, and you turn them into something. That's what I like about the magician cards. So I don't want to go too Halloweeny and turn it into a bit of a, you know, freaky card. I prefer this one. This is one of the nice autumn ones. Um, uh, what is this? Peppa Put, uh, hand dyed yarns from Indonesia. This is too yellow, so that's never going to work. Oh, I still really like this one, the cornbread and honey, you know, that nice. Now that would be a light border, which means I can also expect a light border here. Am I at peace with framing it in a lighter color rather than like hemming it around in a darker color? And here's the other sparkle, sparkle, farkle. Um, I don't know. I have to say, I think I'm liking these two more because I'm afraid that with this one, it's going to introduce too many colors haphazardly. And I really want the center of it to be the prestige, the main event. I don't know that I want a pattern in the border, which this will form because it changes color. I don't know that I want a pattern in the border to compete with the actual design, which is quite busy. Whereas these two are color changing, but you can see this wouldn't be as distracting as this kind of color changing sock yarn. You know, it's always hard to tell. I also have these guys who are skeins that I've already wound. Sometimes it's better to wind a skein first because you think that you get these long stretches where it'll be a bit chill and mellow, and then you realize it's like crazy and frantic the whole way through, which if that's what you're looking for um, is fun. But if that's not what you're looking for, it's going to be a bit of a uh, fly in the ointment. You know, I have to say, I think choosing, choosing your yarn for the border is a big deal. So maybe you take your piece out to the uh, craft store or the knitting store or wherever you go for your yarn and you really need to put your colors up to it when you're choosing your border. It's a huge, I, I can't emphasize that enough because you could start your border and you could spend money on a yarn that could be, you know, $38 a skein and then really hate it, you know, and that would be, uh, to say the least, disappointed. I'm pretty happy with, ooh, that's very pretty too, isn't it? I was just gonna say I'm pretty happy with my decision. Ooh, uh-oh, we got some game changers in here. I think I'm going to remove this one. So I'm going to take a minute to choose what I want. Um, and then I'll come back to you and we'll start working on the crocheting part. So now I'm in a thing, right? I'm in a bit of a dither because I have now pulled out of that one container a bunch of good choices. I, and I want to get your feedback on this. I'm going to turn this video into a two-parter so I can maybe get some feedback overnight. And I'll continue the video tomorrow. Uh, I'll put the cherry earrings back on and the pink sweater and we'll, con we'll conclude it tomorrow. But I really want to make a good decision here. I'm still very partial to this light sparkle and the dark sparkle. And I just want to walk you through this process because um, you're probably going to be here too at some point where you're trying to decide if you're using yarn to finish the edges of your rug, you are, you are in a place of infinite choices. And while that's sometimes good, it's also sometimes bad. Um, so I'm looking at these and thinking, I like the color change in these. And do you remember how, for example, with ones like this and the other one I had out, they don't color change often enough to be static. They are way too dynamic and they create their own pattern because the color change is not constant. 
Do you see what I mean with that? The ones that I have in front of me, the color change is constant. So you would keep getting the same color. They would look something like this, right? As you work them, as you crochet them around the border. And then it becomes a question of what can I eliminate here, common sense wise? Um, this one, do you see how well this matches the border? Uh, sorry, the body, the background. It matches like it was made for it. Um, this is 100% cotton, and again, this is pantyhose. But this is an amazing match. So if I were to choose this one, it would be because I want the border to be not really distinctive and distracting. And I often do feel like that about the borders. So this appeals to me because I'm thinking it really matches, and I'm not a big one for borders. But at the same time, if I'm going to take the time to do a crocheted border, as opposed to just folding my edges back, sewing them down like this, so I have absolutely no border. If I'm going to take the time to crochet, do I want it to look exactly like the thing itself? And then I have to ask myself the secondary question. That's number one. Number two, when I get to the bottom and the wizard's dark body, I'm sorry, the magician's dark, dark body, it will go dark light because this is lighter. And then it's almost like I'm repeating the border under her and she is underlined. Do I want her to be underlined, right? These are things that maybe matter to me, don't matter to you, or wouldn't even come into the conversation. But we all have different things that kind of are jarring, you know, in theory. I don't want to eliminate that because I think it's still a great one. I also pulled this pretty, um, really multi, very hot pink, uh, variegated. And this is, a, this is a real pretty one. It really picks up the bright purples and the bright pinks that are in the composition. And for that reason, I, I like it. It's a bit wild. Um, it would make the composition much more pink, but it does have a lot of good neutrals in it as well. I don't dislike this, I have to say. It's bright. It's way more electric than, for example, this one. So I really like this one. This one has something similar going on, whereas it's more blue-violet, whereas you can see the purples that I've used for the most part are more grapey violet, right? They're more of a red, red purple than a blue purple, whereas this is much more of a blue purple. But there are blues here too. This piece of crystal has lots of blues. You can see how these both match. This one's a little bit darker and it becomes a, a question of, do I want a brighter border or a darker border if I go for something that has this really sort of neon quality and matches as opposed to something that sinks into the background. I pulled this one too, and I have to say, this one is exciting as well because it's another, while this one matches the background of the piece, this one matches a lot of the elements of the piece, right? It's got a lot of the element colors in it. So in that way, it's it's a good find uh, because it's pulling everything together. But I have to say for myself, I'm not, for some reason, this one doesn't strike me as being as, um, much of a team player as for example this one this has some colors that stand out like the really bright yellow and it's bright yellows here too and then you see some really bright kelly greens and i actually don't have green in this piece i have teal but i don't have green so i'm going to eliminate this one just because i'm not sure that i want to introduce any more colors to this piece this, if I didn't see these other pieces and I only had a small yarn collection, I'd say, ooh, look what I found. This is, this is the one. I'm going to eliminate that one because I do have quite a few choices. This is another great favorite of mine, and I've done the background for uh, Night Magic with this, the, the Halloween piece you might have seen a couple years ago. I really like this because it's such an odd color. It's a bit of a sea glass color, very, very, very light turquoise with a green sort of cast to it. And it's got lots of explosive specks of golds and reds, which could go quite well with the background of this piece. I mean, it's, it's an interesting choice because it does match, but it does introduce a new color, right? Because the sea foam is not present. It's related to the teal, but it's really not there. So it would introduce another color. And then the question becomes, do I want to introduce another color? So you can see how this is difficult to work through. It's well worth 
uh, the analytical thought that goes into it because the frame on your piece is everything. This is why I rarely put anything other than the fold, fold down, you know, corner, hide the backing as a finish on any of my pieces because I usually don't like introducing more colors. I'm usually quite happy with a finished piece the way that it is. So rare to have a finished piece for me. I think I'm going to eliminate this one because uh, I'm not sure that I want more colors. I'm not sure, actually. I might leave this to you. I'm at a bit of a crossroads. Let's just recap what our choices are here. And maybe you can leave a comment for me in the body of the video. So this is what we're talking about now. This is what we're down to. Either dark sparkle. We talked about the merits of all of these. They all have great merits. It's just going to come down to a gut instinct. And I'm not sure that mine is good. Um, yeah. Dark sparkle, light sparkle, background blend. Right, that's going to fall right behind, which, which I might like because I don't like it when the border has a heavy framing quality to it. I like it when the piece speaks for itself in general with this piece. And then I have got the hot pink mashup, the hot purple mashup, and the rogue, which is the seafoam. So light sparkle, dark, dark sparkle, melt into background, hot pink, hot, hot purple, or rogue. Tell me what you think. I think I need to maybe put it away. I don't actually put it away. I'll leave it on the table for a while while I do orders over there. And um, I might glance at it every once in a while and take away one if it, if it doth offend. And I will come back and look at this video later to see if maybe you had some great thoughts um, instinct wise, because maybe I'm just tired, but my instincts are not kicking in. It'd be fun to get your feedback. I'll look for that. And I will conclude this video tomorrow in a part two and actually use my crochet hook to start finishing the edges. FYI, if you're working on something tonight along with me and you want to get ahead, what I'm going to do in the end is use my little binder clips for my uh, doing my multi-strand braiding. And what I'm going to want to do tomorrow, and you're going to see me, is I want to fold back, you know, I'm going to roll back or roll forward, it doesn't matter, some of the length all the way around, and I'm going to go over it with a single crochet all the way around. You can see already that when I have this large of a border on it, which all of my patterns usually have at least a four inch border, this is going to make a big, big kind of a worm around the edge to go around. Do I want a border that's this big and fat? I, I don't. You might, but I don't, right? Because I like a subtle border. So before I come back to you tomorrow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stitch around the magician, the finished piece, uh, just a little ways away. And then I'm going to cut outside my stitches. So I rehem it. It's hemmed here to hook. And now I'm going to rehem it and I'm going to trim it down because I don't want a big monster like this big anaconda to have to single crochet around because that's going to make a huge border. And that's going to be a huge statement. And while sometimes that's great for me with this piece, not want it. So I'm going to think about that too. And I'm going to come back to you tomorrow to show you how much I trimmed down. And we'll make a final decision and start crocheting um, the edge of this piece. I will see you tomorrow at Ribbon Candy Hooking.